there are two big themes that I'm seeing playing out with the emergence of Gen AI tools. Number one, of course, is the capabilities that you're seeing from companies like OpenAI with ChatGPT and their Whisper transcription APIs and services. They're amazing. They're top notch. Whisper in terms of transcription is better than Siri, is better than Alexa. It's amazing. And ChatGPT is really, really stellar. So those as standalone services are phenomenal. And I use ChatGPT via the browser almost every day. The other part that is somewhat overlooked, but I think it's just as awesome, is the fact that these AI services have an API ecosystem that is being built around them. And what that means is that you can be much more precise and specific and nuanced about where you inject that AI magic. And you can apply that to a workflow, you can apply that to a business process. And because of the new tooling and the new API infrastructure, that is emerging, it's easier to do more so than ever. In this video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to walk you through an example of how I am doing that for my personal workflow and give you a little bit of commentary in terms of how you might do it for your own workflows and maybe how you might implement uh, these techniques to improve your overall business processes and services. Here's the case study. I am oftentimes out on a walk, I may just be brainstorming, letting my mind wander, or I'm listening to an audiobook or a podcast and I have an idea and I want to capture it then and there quickly. And I don't want to stop and write anything down, but I need a way to capture that. Now I have a workflow where I'll take out my iPhone, I'll record a message. That message gets sent to OpenAI that transcribes that transcribes the audio message and also does some analysis and returns back to me a nice note on that idea that I can add to or reference at a later point in time. It's going to be easier if I demo the functionality for you so that you can follow along and see just how cool this is. So in this example, you know, I've, I've I've plucked this book out of my library, a favorite of mine, Good Strategy to Bad Strategy, and I, I want to reflect on a key point that has always stood out for me from this book. So I'm going to record a note on my phone and I'm going to show you the output after all the AI magic has been done. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got a shortcut here and I'm going to tap to record now. All right, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy by Richard Rummelt. Uh, in his interview with Steve Jobs, the author is asking Steve what his strategy is going to be after returning to Apple. He knows that Apple is in a tough spot and the author wants to hear what Jobs' strategy is going to be. And he's expecting some fluffy type of strategy talk, something to the effect of that, we're, something to the effect of we're going to try harder, we're going to innovate better, we're going to beat the competition. That's all, that's what, what the author calls bad strategy talk. And he is surprised by what Steve Jobs actually has to say. Now, here's the quote when he asked Steve Jobs about his strategy, he just smiled and said to him, I'm going to wait for the next big thing. So Steve Jobs recognized that in technology, there are windows of opportunity that you have to take advantage of, that you can't force these necessarily, but a better strategy is to wait for those waves to come along and then be prepared to ride them. And here's the quote. The Apple to market leadership in its personal computers and said he was actually focused on the sources of and barriers to success in his industry. Recognizing the next window of opportunity, the next set of forces he could harness to his advantage and then having the quickness and cleverness to pounce on it quickly like a perfect predator. There was no pretense that such windows opened every year or that one could force them open with incentives or management tricks. He knew how it worked. 
He had done it before with the Apple II and the Macintosh and then at Pixar. He had tried to force it at Next and it, it, and it had not gone well. It would be two years before he would make that leap again with the iPod and then on with online music and then after that with the iPhone. Steve Jobs' answer that day was to wait for the next big thing. And it is not a general formula for success, but it was a wise approach to Apple's situation at that moment in that industry with so many new technologies seemingly around the corner. So the key idea here is that Steve's job strategy was to wait for the next big technological trend and and try to spot it before others and be positioned to ride that wave. And again, you can't force it. You just got to wait for it and you got to spot it and you have to be nimble and ready enough to ride that wave. That was Steve Jobs' general approach to strategy. Okay, so that's the recording. You heard me say the recording, so you'll see the output of, of this. So let's see here. I'm going to now upload this to a particular folder where I'm uploading these these notes to be transcribed okay so that's gonna take roughly a minute for OpenAI to transcribe it and to send me the note but in the meantime I'd like to show you what's going on in the back end before we see the final product okay so what's happening here is I am I recorded the voice memo here the file got uploaded and when the file gets uploaded pipe dream which is my automation orchestration tool think of this as a tool like zapier or make.com pipe dream picks that up sends that file to OpenAI to be transcribed leveraging the whisper api then that transcription gets sent to the chat gpt function or the gpt model and there are specific instructions that I'll show you a little in a little bit in terms of how that is being processed. And then I'm having Pipe Dream create a new note in my note taking application called Notion. And then I'm going to get an email notification. Okay. So let me wait for that email notification. Let me see if it comes in here. Okay. Perfect. So it looks like I just got it. Okay, so let me just grab this and show you what that looks like here. All right, so this is the notification from Pipe Dream saying, hey, I have a new note for you. It's Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs' strategy for success. And this is just an automated message to let me know that my note is ready. Hey, if you want to build this for yourself, I recommend a video by Thomas Frank where he walks through in a lot of detail how to set this up and all the tools that you're going to need. So I definitely recommend that video. I'll add a link to it in the description below. Again, big thanks to Thomas Frank for putting that together. Really well done video. Now back to the demo. All right, so here we're looking at the final product, the processed note from the message that you just saw me record. So let's take a look at, at this. We have a title, Steve Jobs, Strategy for Success. We have a summary here of my note, the actual transcription of what I said. So I can always go back and reference, reference exactly what I was saying in this particular message. And then here's the cool part. I have ChatGPT or, or OpenAI's GPT model give me the main points, action items, follow-up questions, and potential arguments against this particular concept. So let's see, let's see, let's see how, how good some of these are. Okay, main points here. Steve Jobs' strategy was to wait for the next big thing in technology. He focused on identifying sources of and barriers to success in his industry. Jobs was quick to pounce on opportunities. This led to Apple's domination in personal computers and success with iPod, online music, and, and iPhone. Job 
Jobs recognize that windows of opportunities and technologies can cannot be forced. So pretty good, pretty good points. So then here, what I'd like to 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 see in in this section are ideas in terms of how I might apply this to my business and the businesses that I'm helping to support. So action items: identify potential sources of barriers to success in your industry. I think that would be helpful. Stay up to date on emerging technologies and trends. Yes, of course. Be prepared to act quickly when those opportunities arise. Don't try to force opportunities that are all, that aren't already there. Be nimble and be ready to adapt to changing circumstances. Yes, all points that I think are pretty relevant. What are some follow-up questions? So if if I'm reviewing this at the end of the day, which I I oftentimes do, I'll review the different notes that I've generated at the end of the day, what are the follow-up questions, what are the potential arguments against this line of thinking that I want to consider? So here are some follow-up questions. How do we identify the next big thing in our industry? Yes, this is an important point. There, you know, I think it's difficult to spot the next big thing. There are going to be false positives there, and you know, you might think that something's going to be a big thing, but it's not. Look at look at the metaverse, for example, and Facebook. I think that was a false positive, or they were too early. It, you know, in, in any respect, it, it wasn't a good hit. What are some potential barriers to success? in your industry how can you stay nimble and be ready to adapt to changing circumstances this is also hard too how do you build a nimble organization so that when you do spot that new opportunity that you're ready to pounce on it sometimes companies have gotten really good at their current cash cow business and that's taken away from some of their entrepreneurial nimbleness and ability to be flexible and so how you know that's a good question how do you maintain that nimbleness so that you are ready to pounce on that new opportunity how can you balance waiting for opportunities versus taking action i'm sure this is a discussion that's happening in a lot of boardrooms where you have certain players that are saying we have to go after this opportunity aggressively and other and other folks saying it's not it's not the time's not right just yet we have to wait it's actually not a really it's not a really big opportunity it's not it's not really meant for us not for our business so i'm sure these discussions are happening quite a bit in, in, in boardrooms so i think that's a very good question how can you avoid trying to force opportunities that aren't already there because in some way you do want to define a new opportunity and be the first one to really articulate the 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 pain that is being felt by customers but in another way, you don't want to rush that either. You don't you don't want to be pushing that on the market if it's not already there. So I think that's also a really good discussion point. This is part of the magic of Gen AI is that it offers you this rich context to continue to, to think about and to help further your thinking. So I really like these follow up questions. Okay, so potential arguments against. So if you're if you're of this mindset, how might you steal man uh, a, an argument that that contradicts your position? Let's see what ChatGPT has to say here. Waiting for opportunities may result in missed chances for growth. Yeah, if you're wait if you're always on the fence waiting for the next big thing, you may you may be too wary to actually jump on what these moderate trends are and, and, and that might potentially be money earning opportunities for you. So you, there, there's an opportunity cost that you might be having if you're always waiting for the next big thing. Focusing too much on identifying sources of and barriers to success may lead to a lack of innovation. So if you're always just focused on the hurdles that are keeping competitors from coming into your space, you may not be as focused on innovation. So you see this in heavily regulated industries where companies are spent a lot of time dealing with the regulatory apparatus in their industry, less time on innovation and, and really advancing services for, for customers. Being too quick to pounce on opportunities may result in poor decision making. Yes, if you're too fast to jump on an opportunity, it might be a false positive. It may not be a real trend. Again, metaverse for Facebook. Not all industries have clear windows of opportunities like the technology industry. So, you know, if you are in a in a in a space that's not growing as fast, you might not have the same dynamics as you you have in technology. And there're going to be different industries 
on that spectrum from high growth technology like industries to low growth stable industries as well so where your industry and where your company is on the spectrum you might want to consider not jobs jobs approach may not work for all companies or situations of course you know jobs you could say that jobs is leadership at apple that led led the way even though you, you implement a strategy it may not work for you this is the note that i got from chat gpt and open ai so this is i think a really good note a really good note i i would i would read this and reflect on this and it would it would be beneficial for me and and the fact that I have this transcription, I can add this to my notes wh where I'm, where I capture my thoughts for the book, and it would be helpful. And of course, this is super helpful. I can have this as my summary and just read this and, and, and quickly get a sense of what what I liked about this section in the book. And I have some things to think about and and some arguments against it. Now, let me walk you through some of the details in terms of how this is coming together so that you can better appreciate how you might adopt this to your particular workflow. This is Pipe Dream. This is my orchestration tool. And I'll just I'll just give you a high level overview of these steps. Here is a trigger that's watching a folder waiting for an audio file. Then there's some additional steps. And here's where the AI starts to kick in. First is the transcription, then that transcription gets sent to the chat API functionality for OpenAI. And here is where the AI magic happens. And if you if you want to replicate these results, one, I would say go and watch that Thomas Frank video that I mentioned. He does a really good job of stepping through all these different steps and gives you a ton of documentation really great presentation i will walk you through some of the key parts that is driving that output and what you might want to consider so first of all i'm providing very detailed instructions here to open ai so that it can give me that rich output that you just saw i'm asking it to format the analysis or the output in a very specific way and i'm being very detailed about those instructions here you know down to the you know the title like i want you to give me a title and this has to be in under 15 words for example and some other detail here so that's in terms of how i want the the message to come back to me then i'm doing some additional prompting where i'm seeding the chat the gpt instance with some additional details in terms of how to engage with these types of requests. So here I'm saying, you are an assistant, you only speak Markdown, and I want you to write everything in Markdown. Here is how I want you to return this output. I want you to do it, I want you to do it in a, in a, in a summary, in additional info type of format. I want you to give me these main points in this type of format. I want you to give me follow-up questions in this type of format. And so this is the additional context that the GPT model has in order to return those specific instructions. And why this is important is because this is fully customizable. So in my workflow, I am passing a request for a summary of a note, but GPT can do a lot of things. It could ask you to debug code. You can translate di into different languages. You can add, you can give it different types of instructions that that will enable it to do different things for you. So, for example, another another workflow that I'm putting together is a business idea type of workflow. So, I might be out for a walk and I have an idea for a new business or a new service that I want to put together. So, I envision taking my phone and sending that information to open AI and having open AI one summarize it my thought and how I, I think it, I would build the new business or the new service some and have it brainstorm marketing ideas look for competitors raise different questions re provide business model types of examples provide links to any good references that I should consider. So almost acting as a very customizable assistant for that specific type of inquiry. So I think, you know, I think I'll put that together as well. My point is because you're now plugging this into your workflow in a custom fashion, you can determine 
what that that's going to be for for your particular workflow and whether that be personal or whether that be business all right big thanks to thomas frank for putting together that tutorial again link to that is in the description below check that out and i encourage you to play around with this a little bit more and brainstorm ways in which ai can be injected into your workflow so that you can get some of this ai magic to work for you as well. I hope you enjoy. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.